Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And in this video, I want to go over this breeding RBMK reactor design that uses an irradiation channel in the middle powered by four highly enriched uranium-235 rods on all of its sides. Now you might see some new colored pipes going in and out of the reactor. That's because this entire build is made using the new fluid system that was recently introduced in nuclear attack mode. So now it is possible to cool this entire reactor using only coolants. And then that coolant can be used to make steam in the boilers which can run a turbine. The maximum power production for this build will be 12 million HE per second and if you are using the irradiation channel then it will fall down to something around 8 to 9 million HE. Now make sure to use the latest version of nuclear tech mod for this build because I have not tested it in the previous versions and it might explode. Also it's highly recommended to test this entire build in creative first and see for yourself how it performs and if you want any modifications. So without any further ado let's get straight into this video. The components required for this build is the irradiation channel, graphite moderator, fluid heater, fuel rod, then the neutron reflector and finally the structural column. Note that none of the parts are moderated. So leaving a one block gap from the ground, place down the irradiation channel and surround it on all the four sides using graphite moderator. Next in front of the graphite moderators place down four fuel rods and this will be the power source for our irradiation channel. To cool this build. We are going to use the fluid heater in the corner like this. So there will be total four fluid heaters. And finally, to cover up the open parts of the fuel rod, place down three graphite moderators like this. Next, we are going to place down the neutron reflectors on the intersecting points. So here we have a reflector which is on the intersecting path of both of the fuel rods and do that on all of the four sides. And now finally, to close up this entire reactor, place down reflectors on the very end like this. Now I have not used any control rods in this design for the sake of simplicity and also cause I knew the fuel that I was using. But having control rods after the fuel rod between the moderator reflector pair will help you control the amount of flux that passes through each fuel rod. So for example, you can have a control rod here and then place the moderator reflector pair. And this is also especially important when you are trying out new fuels or experimenting with this design. So with that out of the way, now to complete the reactor, I am going to place structural columns in the remaining corners like this in order to close up all the visible moderators and this will also give the entire reactor a circular look. So once that's done cover up the top side of the entire reactor with RBMK cover blocks. This is also important as it will prevent radiation from escaping. So now that's done, let's take a look on the RBMK fluid heater. So in the fluid heater by default you can use coolant which will be converted into hot coolant. But you can also use other fluids like for example you can use mugroot beer which is 100% efficient and it also has the heatable tag that's why you are able to use it. Another fluid with the heatable tag is steam. But as you can see the efficiency is only 25% and at this point you are better off using the RBMK boilers instead of the fluid heaters. So now we are going to connect the top part of the fluid heaters with the fluid ducts and these are going to be the hot coolant ducts. In a similar way on the bottom side we are going to connect the fluid heaters with ducts but the bottom side is going to be the coolant input. So connect all of the four like this and set them to coolant by shift right clicking with the coolant fluid identifier. Now bring this out from the middle and then also set it to coolant as we want to input our coolant in the fluid heater. To input coolant, place down a barrel, set it to coolant and then start placing coolant barrels inside it. It requires total 64,000 millibuckets because we have four fluid heaters. So I have inputted the required amount and now all of the fluid heaters are full of coolant like this. For the next phase, you will require the heat exchanging heater, the boiler and also the flow gauge pipe for better calibration of the heater. So leaving a three block gap from the reactor on the fourth block, place down your heat exchanging heater and then leaving a one block gap, place down two more like this. You can also use a single heater boiler pair, but I am using three for better balancing of each and every boiler. So place down boilers on top of the heaters like this 
and now if we take a look at the heat exchanger it will convert hot coolant into coolant and the rbmk reactor will convert coolant into hot coolant thus making a closed loop so first in order to complete this loop i am going to connect the coolant line so the first one or the first connection point on the right side i am assigning it to coolant set it like this and now we need to take the hot coolant back into the reactor also by the way if you want to you can place a flow gauge pipe like this and set it to coolant so it will monitor the amount of coolant passing through this entire system every second or every tick next this is the pipe for hot coolant from the left hand side like this connect it to the top hot coolant pipes that we placed before there we go you don't need to separately monitor the hot coolant flow rate because it will be the same as the coolant flow rate now for the amount per cycle set it to high enough value like for example this in this setup the amount of coolant that will pass every tick will be 2400 so make sure that the number you set is high enough or basically more than 2400 that's why i said it's important to have the flow gauge pipe so that you can calibrate the entire heater in a much better way connect the top portion of the boilers for the steam and place down a leviathan turbine and then connect the top portion of all the boilers like this to the input of the turbine and here also we are going to have a flow gauge pipe for seeing the amount of steam that is going into a turbine to convert the steam or the low pressure steam back into water i am going to have a big cooling tower and this big cooling tower can be then connected to the output of the leviathan turbine again with a flow gauge pipe in the middle to monitor the amount of low pressure steam and finally to make the closed loop of water i have a tank of water set to input output mode which is green one right here now the output of this tank or sorry the input of this tank one of the inputs is going to get connected to the cooling tower and finally the output will go into all three of the boilers and also here have a flow gauge pipe to see the amount of water that the boilers are consuming once you make the connection all of the boilers will fill up with water and now we wait for the tank to fill up once the tank is full you can take out your infinite water tank as this is now a closed loop make sure to have an energy storage block or battery in front of the turbine and now we can start our reactor by placing or basically by activating it with a radium 226 beryllium rod so in each of the fuel rods first place down your neutron source and then replace it with the high enrich uranium 235 rod and once that's done all of the temperatures of the rod will start going up and they will cap out at around 1700 degrees celsius or a little bit more than that as the reaction or the flux function will go up so yeah and now if we take a look at the power production we should get roughly 12 million he per second so as the temperature of the rods go up so does the steam value and therefore the power production increases now the power production is maximum because we have nothing in the irradiation channels right now and due to that the coolant amount the steam everything is at its maximum value right now as you can see all of the boilers are at equal temperatures and they are producing equal amounts of steam and water is also looping back perfectly into the tank you can see the amount of water using the flow gauge pipe and now if i start or basically if i activate the radiation channel the breeding speed is pretty fast but what happens due to this is that the path of flux becomes blocked so due to this the temperature will come down for each and every rod and that will result in a reduction in the power produced so the power will fall down to somewhere between 8 to 9 million he and clearing up the irradiation channel will once again result in the temperature and power levels getting back to their original value because the neutron path is now clear so i hope you guys found this video helpful if you did do smash that like button and also subscribe to the channel because it would help me out a lot if you have any modifications for this build or suggestions for any future build please leave them in the comment section down below peace out my guys stay safe Invincible.